In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a vintage film look to your videos, including a camera shake effect, so your videos look like they were shot handheld using a vintage film camera. This is a fun one, so let's get into it. But first, if you want to learn more about Camtasia, I live stream every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time here on YouTube. I show you how I make my videos with Camtasia and I answer any questions you have live. You don't have to be a channel member or be subscribed to my channel to join. My live streams are open to anyone. But if you do subscribe, you'll be notified when I post new videos or when I'm about to go live. So I hope to see you Tuesday and now back to this video. So here I am in Camtasia and I've already got a video, a sample project in place. Uh, this is a video I shot this morning for the live stream that I did earlier today. This is the trailer for that. Uh, but anyways, it's already been edited. As you can see from the cuts I've got down here on the timeline, uh, it's already edited. It's a video that's ready to go. Uh, but now let's give this an old school grainy film look uh, as if it was shot on an old 1960s era video film camera. <laughs> okay, so there's several steps I want to walk you through. The first step is to add a camera shake effect. Uh, as if you were holding the camera handheld and not on a tripod. So you're obviously you're going to get a little bit of shake uh, as you hold the camera. So to get that, and you may want to use this uh, effect only in some of your projects and maybe not everything I'm about to show you. Uh, but it's the first step I want to show you. So what we do is we're going to go up to behaviors up here and then scroll all the way down and look for this one here, the wiggle behavior and click on that and drag that down here. Now you notice that's only going to drag on to one of my clips. Okay. Now I could expand this arrow here, highlight this control C, control or command C on a Mac to copy it and then highlight the rest of them and then control or command V to paste it. That gets all the effects on all of the clips, but I'm going to show you a, an easier way to do this. So let me control Z a couple times to back up to where we began. And what I'm going to do first actually is I'm going to highlight all of this, including the audio, which is at the bottom. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on stitch selected media. Okay. Now what that did is it stitched all of the video segments together into one clip and all of the audio segments together in a clip. And that way we can add effects just to the one clip and not have to worry about copying them over. Okay. So now let's go ahead and grab this wiggle behavior and we'll drag that down to the video clip like this. Okay. And now we're going to go up here into properties and click on during. Okay. We want to make sure that the in style is at none and the out style is set to none as well. We're only going to worry about the during. Now it comes preset with, uh, with all of these properties set to their default values. And if you hit play here on the playhead, you can see what, what it looks like. Just for YouTube using Camtasia. I'll be answering so, some. So that doesn't exactly look like uh, a handheld camera shot. We've got to make some adjustments to these. And what you notice is as this moves, we're, since the, the actual video size is the exact same size as, as the canvas, if we start moving it around, uh, you're going to start to see some, some black uh, bars above, below, or on any of the edges as, the, uh, as the, the video moves around. So what we're going to want to do to avoid seeing those black bars appear is we want to zoom in a little bit on this so that, uh, so that you won't see those. So what we're going to do is let's go back to the properties for the actual video right here and let's just bump the scale up a little bit. That's probably enough right there. Okay. So, uh, it, it depends on how much you're going to modify, uh, the wiggle properties as to how far you want to scale that. But let's start with this. Let's go back to the behavior properties and now let's just start making some adjustments. So the frequency I'm going to make that. So the higher you go on the frequency, the faster it moves. Okay. That's quite fast. Actually, the speed is probably not too bad but it's moving too much. It's way more than what you'd get on a camera shake. And so what I find is the X offset and the Y offset, those more or less define how much horizontally, that's the X offset and vertically the Y offset, how much it moves. So let's, we want to drop these down considerably. So let's bring them down to something less than one. The Y, let's actually type this in. Let's make that 
point 0.8. Uh, and the x, I'm going to make that a little bit more. Let's just make that 2 and just see what that looks like throughout the week, as well as any questions you want to ask me today. Okay, that's closer. It's, it's happening a little too fast, I think. But my reasoning is the x offset, I've got that higher than the y. I just feel like when you're holding a camera, there's probably more chance that you're going to be moving side to side than up and down. Maybe that's just me, but uh, I, I find that that gives the best effect. So if we go 2 and then 0.8, and we can also introduce a little bit of rotation, probably not too much. That might be too much. During the live stream. I'll yeah, that's, that's way too much. So let's bring that down 0.21, let's say. Also be diving deeper into the latest video. Okay, and you can play with all of these. Let's bring this, the nuance up a little bit and just see what that looks like. Videos I posted since last week's Camtasia 2024 release. I think that's pretty good. That looks pretty good. So you've got that shake motion and, and pay close attention to the edges. Make sure with the clip highlighted, make sure that none of the highlighted edges come inside the, the canvas area and giving a sneak peek on what's to come. Also, for those who may not have access... No, and I don't even think it comes close. I probably don't even have to zoom in that much. But let's just leave it like that. So there's your camera shake. That's the first step. And maybe that's all you want to do <laughs> for what you're doing. But let's take this a little step further. Next thing I want to do is I want to go up to visual effects and then up here at the top, let's click on filters. Okay? And let's go and bring this classic black and white, classic BW, that's classic black and white. We'll drag that down here, and that gives us a black and white look. ...of Camtasia, I've now got... Okay, looking better. And as you can see, there's all kinds of other LUTs, uh, filters or LUTs that you can choose from. And if you decide that's not the look you want, uh, over here in the Properties window, under Color LUT, uh, you can click this drop-down and then click whichever one you want. There's all kinds of different other looks you can choose from. That's kind of a grainy look right there. Um, blue pop is another one. Uh, but I like this classic BW. Let's stick with that one. And I've got my intensity up to 100%. If any of the ones that you choose, um, you don't want to use all of it. You just want a subtle addition. Then you can draw this, uh, you can dial this intensity uh, down a little bit. If the intensity is down to zero, that's as if you didn't add a lot at all. Okay. Um, so let's, uh, I'm going to leave that right up to 100% black and white. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the visual effects and click on the visual effects sub tab. And let's go down, scroll down towards the bottom to this one here, vignette. And let's drag that vignette, I think is how you say it. Drag that down here, let it go on the clip. And this is what we get here. Now this isn't exactly what I want. These, these uh, corners are too rounded. So over in the properties, I scroll down till we see a vignette here. And let's start modifying the size, uh, the roundness, okay, and the feathering. The feathering is a nice touch. Okay, and just kind of dial these in until you get the look that you like. I think that looks good. Now the next one I'm going to add, and this is a very subtle one, but if we scroll back up here, also in visual effects, motion blur right here. So grab the motion blur and drag that down. Now, the motion blur, you may not even notice a difference. It, it all depends on how much camera shake you add. Uh, there may not be any motion blur, but uh, I think it's just, a, it's like a safety thing. It's, it might be subtle enough to, to detect. So I add the motion blur to this and I draw the uh, intensity all the way up. And this is what we have now. For those who may not have access to the latest version of Camtasia, starting to look good. So there's three more things I want to show you now. The next two, we're going to go outside of Camtasia because I want to get some additional assets to add to this. And let me just show you what I mean. So the first one is a film grain. Okay, so uh, let me drag this down here. This is my Motion Array account. And I've already searched for this. I, I typed in grain overlay under footage, okay? And I found this one right here, the grunge effect from Super 8. There's all kinds of different overlays here that you can add. You download these, uh, these um, overlays and then add them to your videos. Um, if you have an account with Motion Array, you can download as many uh, assets as, as you need. So from footage to music, sound effects, all kinds of different things. 
So I downloaded this grunge effect here. Just click this down arrow here to download it, just like that, and download the HD version. Okay, let me just get this out of the way because I've actually already done this. Uh, let's go and go to our media bin and let's bring the grunge effect in. Here it is right here. And now let's drag it down to our timeline. Put it right here. It's a video, so it doesn't go the entire length of, of my video here. This one is a five, looks like it's a five second uh, video clip. And then what you want to do to this as an overlay, so it's over top of our video, let's go up to opacity and drop that down. So if it's down to zero, you won't see it at all. Let's just bring it up a little bit. We just want to add this subtle effect. Ah, that's probably good there. Let's just see what that looks like. Join me today at 1 p.m. Eastern time for my weekly live. I think that looks great. Now, since this is a video uh, the, uh, and it's not long enough, all we have to do is copy and paste. So with it highlighted, control C and then control V to paste it. I'll bring it back here. Now I'm gonna highlight both, control C, control V to paste. Bring that back and just keep repeating, control C, control paste. Control V, I mean, <laughs> control V again to here. Okay, we'll delete this one. And this one here, we'll just bring back to there. And there we go. Into the latest videos I posted since last week's came. Just like that. The next thing I wanna show you is also going back to motion array because this time I wanna grab a sound effect. Okay, and in this case, I went to sound effects and I searched for, actually I don't have it here, but I know I searched for projector. And the one that I found that I liked, I've already done this ahead of time, is this film projector reel right here. Okay, so I love that. So I just click here to download it. Okay, let's get that off of the screen. Now we'll go into where I downloaded it and I will bring that in. And now let's bring this sound effect down onto our video. Now I like to have the sound effects as the number one track. So in order to move this track down to the bottom, I'm simply gonna click it here and drag it down like that. Now it's the lowest uh, track. But now that volume is probably too loud. Camtasia, I'll be answering way too loud. So I'll just click here and drag this down. Something like that. Some questions I received throughout the Much better. And then I'm gonna click and copy that and paste it over here. Okay, and then I will shorten that like that. And now we've got this. This version of Camtasia, I've now got a special 10. Awesome. One more thing I want to show you. If you think about old films, sometimes if you're replaying an old film that you found in your attic or your basement or something, and maybe it's playing a little slow or even fast, like you can you can modify the speed that this plays as well if you want to add that level of damage, I guess, if you will, to the video. And here's how you would do that. All you do is you go to your video clip, right click it, add clip speed, okay? And now you want to adjust the clip speed. If we're gonna slow it down, we want to adjust it out this way. Okay, let's slow it down to 0.9. All right. Now we also though, in order to keep the audio and the video in sync, we need to adjust the clip speed of the audio to match. Okay, the, the voiceover to match the video. So we'll right click the audio portion as well, the voiceover, add clip speed and we'll do the same. I'll just click this and drag it out to match. You wanna make sure your uh, timeline snapping is on. Um, so, uh, and match up the video like that. And now it's going a little bit slower. So let's play this now. For those who may not have access to the latest version of Camtasia. I think that's great. Now, one good thing about adjusting the clip speed of voiceover is it doesn't modify the pitch. The pitch, or you know the level, the high low level of the of the audio doesn't change. So that's a that's a really cool thing about adjusting the clip speed of 
voiceover is that the pitch does not change. So I love that. So now that this is longer though, we'll have to make adjustments here. Um, this audio here, we'll stretch that out. Uh, I'll probably just delete that little one there and recopy those. These are all the same. Paste it there. Okay, and now I'll shorten this back there. And that's our finished video. Now got a special 10% off disc. And now you've got a vintage looking, old, grainy video. Do you want more tips like this? Let me know in the comments below. Or come join me on Tuesdays in my live stream. I live stream every Tuesday at one o'clock Eastern here on YouTube, sharing my screen and doing how-to tutorials. I show you how I make my videos and I answer any questions you have live. So if you're looking to level up your videos, join me on Tuesdays. I'm Rob and I'll see you in the next video or in a live stream. I'll see you soon.